I'm Britt Mosley. We are instructional staff developers and we're here at Clearwater High School. We've been here for the last few months to support teachers in their literacy efforts in order to improve instructional practice. We're going into classrooms to see some of that great work in practice. We started this project in January at the request of Principal Keith Masterides. Good morning, team. Good morning. How are we doing? And the project really wouldn't have been as successful if we had not had the support of administration. We've had the opportunity to work with our um, instructional staff developers to put together a plan that is second to none. I'm very proud of our teachers and the way we've been able to work with the district. And what we've seen is that the, the rigor has just moved tenfold. Not only in our language arts and reading courses, but in our biology, in our mathematics, our social studies, because it's rubbing off. The, the, the whole process, and, and the other teachers coming in saying, hey, we'd like to be a part of this too. What are some of the strategies that we could use? So what we've seen is a huge shift, a huge paradigm shift in the growth mindset and the, and, and the belief in the kids and the fact that collaborative structures need to happen. Uh, the principal was really interested in getting involved in a project to uh, help his teachers and help the school make growth, really quick growth. We knew it had to be fast and furious. We only had a few weeks before the FSA was going to happen. After determining the areas that we would need to focus on to really have the most impact, we did some on-the-spot coaching. We were able to really find some targeted skills. So they're asking us to make some inferences based on what we just read, right? We honed in on um, standards aligned resources that would really catch a lot of those um, lower lying areas that we really needed to focus on and we brought in collaborative structures that really got the students doing most of the thinking and most of the talking and really kind of beefing up their work. Now let's hear from some of our teachers that we've had the privilege to work with. I really liked that we were, had you guys laid out the standards we needed. So we had known as like a school-wide we needed to focus on certain standards. So that was easier to kind of teach to. Because I know with English, sometimes you're teaching a lot of different standards in one day. So focusing on one and building upon that helped a lot better, especially to keep kids focused and knew what they needed to work on. Since they had an idea of what they were going to see on the test versus what they were struggling with. So you do notice a lot more kids getting better at it because when you let them practice a lot more when you don't so much put a big grade on it more of like we're letting you talk about this letting you experience it talk with your classmates decided out the kids are a lot more willing to answer and they're able to see the growth because in the beginning I'd have one or two kids answering questions when I'd ask the whole class but when they're able to talk two on two or three in small groups and discuss their answers without being penalized for having wrong answers. It gets, by the end of it, a lot more kids. Uh, so it actually really. So I, what I think you should do is actually unhandicap, if that's possible, the people that can. How can we connect that to what all right, so biggest aha moment. I have a student in one of my periods that has struggled all year long. So at the beginning of the year, he had Fs and Ds in class. But as we started focusing on especially FSA prep and all those different things, he was getting a lot more engaged. He was understanding more. Just this past like two weeks, we were working on an assignment where kids had to connect the theme with evidence without even reading the story and he was one of my first students that was able to connect both of them like all of them correctly and was able to back up why he did it so he was able to tell me this goes with this because you can see that the character is doing this in this line or something like that I can't remember the exact line but that kind of moment I was like I made a difference in this kid's life. Uh, my name is Kathy McClellan and I am a teacher at Clearwater High School. I teach English 10th grade and 9th grade. Okay, so show me, what is, how are you going to turn that into a showing sentence? Today in my class you saw the kids working collaboratively to improve writing and my what I'm trying to do is get the students to do the work because before 
I had been doing a lot of teacher, you know, direct teaching. But what I really want to get the students to do, and what because of this training, what I've really been prompted to do is get the students to teach each other and to teach, you know, themselves in these collaborative groups. So that's what you saw today: is them collaborating together to improve. Yeah, you can just, just practice this. Like an angry pirate, or just anything. Right? Because of the participation in the project, my planning became more focused on a using student work to in my lessons so anything that I would grade the night before I would use that in my lessons the next day and that immediately got the students to become more engaged. The other thing is just making sure every lesson had collaborative structures. So because of the training and the project work um, some resources that I use now that I hadn't used before would be um, the acronym CC so getting the students to know that acronym re really well so it's like claim, or evidence, citation, elaboration the students internalized that and then they started teaching each other that acronym and that was amazing. After I started using the CC acronym I noticed a huge difference in their writing and I didn't, it was sitting down with the trainers and having them sort of show me how to break it down that I could go back and do it with the class and then show students how to break it down and then I had the students teaching each other how to break it down and it started to splinter off and suddenly my class knew how to write a, a paragraph. Think of using imagery and a metaphor right in comparison to show that you're hungry. We're going to come back, okay? The biggest eye-opener for me when they were expected to struggle and work together was that they could do it. Because previously, I had been giving them way too much. I've, I've been sort of giving them the answers and not even realizing I was doing it. But then after this training, it sort of helped me to just let go and let them do it. And now every lesson, I, I try to work in a collaborative structure so that they can do it on their own because A, they learn it better. They enjoy learning from each other more than they want to learn from me, as you know, because it, it's boring if I'm just up there talking. It, it helps them to take ownership of the learning. And it's, it's my, my favorite experience is when I walk around and they're teaching each other. Teachers really need to have kids talking to each other all the time, as often as they can in the classroom. That the, the best resource that can be used in any teacher's classroom is the student's work. They, uh, they relate to that. They learn from each other better than they learn from us, it seems like. So using authentic student work, uh, using very focused feedback so that the kids are able to see progress. If they can see themselves making gains, it inspires them to want to continue to do the work and it motivates them to stay engaged. I think that for planning, the best, uh, the biggest change, the best change that I made was having students look at their own work and look at their own data before they moved forward. Um, kind of helped to create a roadmap for where we were going in the next few days or even in the next few weeks. And if they had a place that they knew that they were starting from, they could use that as a jumping off point for the work, the progress that they needed to make. Smart move. Get the numbers down first. Cool. And don't forget, there's more than one right way to do this. Rather than having them speak out to the whole class, they gain a little confidence by collaborating in groups of three or four. And then they can take that information from the three or four together, sort of synthesize it, and create a more complete, meaningful answer when they're asked to share with the whole class. I think uh, for me, one of the big aha moments was actually on test day, which sounds crazy, but we went into the test before the testing instructor started with the instruction. All my students sat down with a piece of paper and started writing out their plan. I had never seen that before. It shows me that they really bought in, they really showed a sense of agency. As soon as we got there, without any instruction from me, before the directions even started, they were sitting down, they were focused with a pen and paper in their hand, and they started making a plan. That rocked my world. Put them, I would yeah, recommend. Put them in order. Uh, yeah, they're numbered for you. So I would put them in order by number first. Oh, we always just put them in matching them, then we put them. Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't have a teaching background. I have a philosophy degree and a little bit of business background. So for me, this was a chance to see how other teachers work more than I've ever had an opportunity before. So it was almost a paradigm shift from 
the way that I was uh, giving instruction in the past to the way I was giving instruction now. I think the biggest shift was having the students really take an active role and, a, and, and, and gain a bit of agency in the classroom so that they knew what they had to do going forward. My name is Mindy Salipo and I teach English Language Art here at Clearwater High School. This is my first year teaching. It's D. It's D. It's D. It's D. It's D. It's D. The biggest change in my planning as a result of this project was actually that I did a lot more chunking that I, than I used to do before. Um, I don't think that before I was breaking it down enough for the students and once I started doing that, um, breaking it down more, um, they, they were starting to get it. So maybe go back to your reading and it says, what can you infer? The biggest differences in the resources that I use now, um, I have started using much shorter texts because we were using much longer texts that I think I was, they were almost losing attention and they weren't ready for that yet. And so when I started using those short synthesis articles, it was easier for them to understand the material, to get it, and then we could graduate into a longer text. And with those short synthesis articles, one of the most valuable things that we taught with them was the elaboration piece. And that was the biggest takeaway that my students had from the FSA. We used the technique of CC, where um, during their body paragraphs, they had to use claim, evidence, citation, and elaboration. And because of those short synthesis articles, it was very easy for them to use all four of those in each of their body paragraphs to cite their claim to find their evidence, cite it, and then elaborate. So because it was a very small targeted area, it was very easy for them to practice that very specific technique, and they, they got very, very proficient. So, they talk about yes. like, how they show yes. how The biggest surprise for me when I started using um, more collaborative structures during this FSA prep was I found that I stopped rescuing them so much. Um, sometimes in order to keep going, I would kind of give them the answer a little bit so that we could move along. But when they were in pairs, what started happening was instead of me rescuing them, I would say to them, well, let's discuss it with your partners. And then they would start to talk about it and I stopped rescuing them and they were doing more of the work, which is I think what we, what we really want them to do. Was that something that you took from your own knowledge or was that something that you read in the text? Yes, so that's what made that incorrect, right? Yeah. Right, you have to remember now, that's why A wasn't the right answer, was because you were using that from your own knowledge. I had an aha moment with one of my students just the other day and um, it, was a, it was a wonderful moment for me and I was reading over a piece of writing that she had and she turned to me and she said, you're not saying anything and she goes, it must be bad and I looked at her and I said, absolutely not, this brings me so much joy, this piece of writing. I said, because what you need to understand is at the beginning of the year, you were writing things just your thoughts down on a topic. And what I see here is you using the technique that we've been practicing. If you look, here is your claim. Here is the evidence that you just got from the text and you're citing it. And then you just use one of the analysis sentence starters that we've been practicing and now you're elaborating. And this gives me so much joy that I'm speechless. And that was just such a moment for me. And it was a moment for her too because she was so excited and we were so proud together because we did it together. And it was a, just a really great moment for both of us. And so to see that much growth in a student was just a really great moment for both of us. Okay, so as a first year teacher, um, it was just amazing having these coaches come in and, and help and be there with me. To, to help me. I'm just somebody who will, you know, I, I just want all of the resources I can to do the best that I can for my, for my students. And having them come in and show me, 
you know, how to get to those standards, how to break those standards down, unpacking them, to, to make sure that I'm hitting all of the targets, to make sure that I can get the most student growth for each of them, I think was the best thing that could have happened. So the final thing that we recognized was a kind of an anchoring element in any kind of work that you do to have quick progress in a classroom is that your resources have to be um, short, sweet, and directly to the point, whatever that standard is, focused completely on that standard. It's great hearing from some of the teachers and, and hearing about some of the positive experiences that they had. Now let's hear a little bit from the students and their perspective. Going into the test, I was very prepared because I was provided with other lessons beforehand. And even though I had been a strong writer beforehand, I'm more of a creative writer. The, what you were teaching us, like the CC, the, just remembering how you wrote them on the board, just being able to look up and just remember how you put them in and remember the order they were in, kind of helped me as I was writing. I'm not very good at essays, however, with all the lessons I got, I was able to write with main points and elaborate on them. Um, for feeling prepared wise, I'd say on a scale from 1 to 10 I was about an 8. Learning a lot of different things in class helped me go into the test feeling more comfortable that I was going to be able to actually do well on the test. Like I said, I didn't know how to open, it, get, grab their attention. All those techniques you guys taught us like uh, the CC, just how to hook them and make them want to read your story. Uh, you know, I wasn't really, I didn't know any of those techniques. So when I went into the FSA, it was definitely, I was a lot more you know, open-minded. I was a lot more confident, for sure. Okay, so going into the writing FSA, I felt prepared because like we were doing so much practice in class. So I just like, I felt like I was ready to do it, you know? Um, elaboration definitely was for me when it clicked because I first came in not really knowing anything about it. I was just, feel like I was stuck with just imagery. Like, you know, I had to describe everything, but we started learning different types of it. And by the end, and I was ready to take the test, I just felt way more comfortable with it because we spent so much time on learning that. Sometimes when we went around the classroom, I felt like it was helpful when we walked around the class and looked at like the good essays and the bad essays, and like we were like critiquing them. We figured out what we were doing wrong and what they were doing right, you know. Um, I would like to see more of this. I feel like, especially coming from middle school, they didn't really focus on different types of writing or anything. So when you get to high school, um, them making you prepared for that really helps you out in the long run. Right. It's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. It's just like, it's actually easier than I thought it would be because like it sounded so hard, but when we went over it and went over it in practice, like the boot camp, like he said, it got way easier and I actually thought of it more. And it was like smoother and I understood it better. We had a really good idea that this was working when the, the students were teaching each other and when we would walk into classrooms and you could just see the confidence. But then we really knew that it worked when we got the scores back from FSA and we saw double digit growth. But then what's the content being taught? Right. We heard the feedback from the students, we heard the feedback from the teachers, we heard the feedback from administrations and then to actually see the numbers come in and just solidify what we already knew, that was a win. Springboard and start from this year. Um, and those, that first cluster of key ideas and details is where we really need to be hitting the ground running this year with them. It was born in the middle of some work that I got involved in this year um, at a project that was going on at Clearwater High School. And so you're going to see a lot of videos of a lot of kids talking and a lot of teachers talking on, a, on this kind of special project where we were working to see if in a very short period of time with some very targeted work, um, if we could see great change in growth toward mastering those standards um, and, and hopefully great growth on FSA scores which we'll see very shortly. So but teachers had a couple different opportunities over over the summer to receive a condensed version of the, the training that we did at Clearwater um, in the progressive teaching practices, professional development. Um, they were also able to see bits and pieces of it at district-wide training this year. By the end of the project, we were also working with some of those teachers and finding ways to grow where their students were. They may not have had the same three top categories. This training came about because about halfway into the project that we were working, or the project that we were working at the school, we, we, were, we saw such tremendous growth, um, probably even more than we had expected to see. It was happening so fast that we knew we had to chronicle it. We knew we had to share it. 
there were two basic rules with quoting that I constantly taught my kids. One is you, if you quote what the claim is, if you, the words you choose to pull out are the same words that are the claim, you're going to have an epic fail. You're gonna say the sky is blue, the weatherman said the sky is blue, therefore the sky is blue. And that's what you get in a paragraph and it's awful. So what I told the kids is you if you can find the imagery, you only quote two or three words from the imagery. You never quote in full sentences and you quote only from imagery. And when you do that, you have to explain it. It can't stand alone. They even understand. You can't just say this. It's like gobbledygook. So automatically, they've moved into logic and reasoning. They can't even summarize it. They can't say, there was a fire blazing, and that means that there was a fire blazing. They have to explain how it relates to the quote. So the summary elaboration is gone forever from your world. So fixing quoting will solve a lot of your elaboration problems almost instantaneously. It's not something that we dealt with. We had three weeks and we were mostly focusing on just getting them to open their minds about you know, where elaboration comes from and all the different kinds of elaboration you can possibly do and, and to learn that it doesn't ever come from the text, none of it, zero. It come, you read your evidence and then you put the text set away and then you write from your head and they did finally get it. And you'll see, they absolutely did it. It was fantastic. Yeah, I think the, the four biggest takeaways that we had in the end is that teachers really need to have kids talking to each other all the time, as often as they can in the classroom. That the, the best resource that can be used in any teacher's classroom is the student's work. They, uh, they relate to that. You heard, if you were watching the training at all, you heard one of the girls say, when my work was up on the board, they respond to that. They learn from each other better than they learn from us, it seems like. So using authentic student work, uh, using very focused feedback so that the kids are able to see progress. If they can see themselves making gains, it inspires them to want to continue to do the work and it motivates them to stay engaged um, and then the whole environment changes. We also, the final thing that we recognized was a kind of an anchoring element in any kind of work that you do to have quick progress in a classroom is that your resources have to be um, short, sweet, and directly to the point, whatever that standard is, focused completely on that standard. have received nothing but positive feedback and most of the time it's I loved this training how can I get it to the rest of my colleagues okay. when you're going through and you're thinking about your hopes that's something that you can absolutely do is draw on a personal experience that you already had so it's probably one that she's going to get to thinking about like you know imagine if you had to go and prepare for the unknown like you went and your family got supplies but you don't even know what you're getting did you see the big, like, army trucks that were going through neighborhoods because yeah. they would actually have to tall enough wheels? Because, like, oh. other cars But they actually do that. And people would be like, oh, in the So, that's Because we had so much success at Clearwater and then over the summer, such positive feedback, we're taking the show on the road and we are going into schools for site-based professional development and so we can either bring the progressive teaching practices training to you as a whole maybe for an after-school PD or we can bring it in in pieces on common planning or however that works for your team. Remember that when Hurricane Sandy hits up north it's not like it is in Florida it was cold it's cold in, in New Jersey in November, right? So you want to give them that feeling. So when you're writing that poem, you want to be creative in it and let them feel that right? I think it's very much appreciated <laughs> um, that we're coming in and doing site-based PD because it allows some flexibility for teachers who maybe have other things going on after school that, that we can come in and, and meet them where they are.